Making good vodka with batch distillation is complicated by increasing cooling demands of the distillation column as the run continues. Most home distillation systems and videos you see on YouTube do not design for this requirement. The result is that as the batch progresses, the lower part of the column gets hotter and the first two or three stages of fractional distillation consume more and more of the column so that the heat losses from the column come to match their cooling requirements. The commonest cooling arrangement is the column top condenser, which works not by reducing the temperature of the column top, but by removing the latent heat of vaporisation from vapour and returning liquid to the column, which then trickles down and is vaporised using heat from the lower stages. The liquid condensed is mostly alcohol, which has a low specific latent heat of vaporisation, whereas the heat loss required is to condense water vapour, which has a much higher latent heat of vaporisation. This scheme works fairly well for regulating the function of the adiabatic part of the column, but it really isn't very effective at removing the heat from the bottom two or three stages, particularly when the alcohol content of the wash is below about 20%, when it requires a downflow of condensed liquid that is larger than optimal for maximising the interaction between the vapour and the liquid phases. What's needed is a cooling system at the bottom of the column which has the capacity to remove heat over a wide range of powers while maintaining a constant temperature. In other words, isothermal cooling. I've devised and developed a system for doing this. I haven't found reports of it being used before, but I'm sure it has been, so let me know if you've heard of it. Firstly, to clarify some terminology. A deflagmator is a cooling device through which a vapour mixture flows. It is designed to condense out the less volatile vapour. That is what I'll be using here. A column head or column top condenser is a different thing. It is a cooling system placed at the top of the column. It fully condenses mixed vapours rather than selectively condensing less volatile components. The condensed liquid falls back down the column to produce reflux. A lot of moonshine videos use these terms interchangeably, but I will not. This graph shows the temperature of various stages of a fractional distillation column in the water ethanol system. And from this graph we can see that the bit at 78 degrees is effectively adiabatic, that is, it does not gain or lose heat from its surroundings, whereas the lower bit that's over 78 degrees is exothermic and has more demanding cooling requirements that change through the course of the run. So we need a system of heat removal which can remove heat at a wide range of different rates but without changing temperature. And we want to nominate that temperature to be around about 78 degrees centigrade. With most cooling systems, the rate at which heat is withdrawn from something increases when it gets hotter. But we want a system which withdraws a widely variable amount of heat at a fixed temperature. The specific latent heat of vaporisation is the heat required to turn a liquid into a vapour at the same temperature, and this is a large amount per unit mass. If we had a liquid that boils at our nominated temperature, then it would serve our purpose because at the same temperature it would boil slowly for a small amount of heat absorption and rapidly for a large amount. So all we need to achieve an isothermal cooling system is a liquid that boils at the right temperature and some form of jacketed cooling arrangement like this. The liquid is readily to hand. It is an alcohol water mixture with 90-95% to alcohol, so four shots or heads from previous runs will do fine, as they have about the right boiling point. We need a chimney through which the boiled vapour goes and a condenser to condense it so that it falls back down into the vessel and does not have to be constantly replenished. So we fill the jacket with this liquid and we have an isothermal cooler and put a reflux condenser above it. The cooling water to the reflux condenser carries away the heat. So here is my system made of an inch and a quarter copper tube and three food cans soldered together. There's a silicone rubber pipe on the outside so I can see the level of liquid and I know how high to fill it. And a conventional Liebig condenser acting as a reflux condenser. The isothermal deflagmator is here. 
At the beginning of the run, it simmers slightly. As the run progresses, it boils more and more vigorously, drawing out more and more heat, but always at the same temperature, leaving the top of the column to operate under steady conditions. I've insulated it here because it only works properly when it's boiling, and this speeds up the time it takes to get to the boiling temperature. There are a number of advantages of this system over the column head condenser. It applies the cooling where it's needed rather than cooling the whole column. It cools at precisely the appropriate rate for the applied boiler heater power and it means you only need precise control of one parameter, the heating power to the boiler. No fiddling with water flow through a column head condenser. You can see how cheaply I made it with recycled pipe, empty food tins and a bit of solder. Total cost of materials including the spiral prismatic packing for the column was under 100 US dollars. There is room for improvement. I haven't worked out the minimum length of the column and what the optimal length or diameter of the deflegmator should be and this thin column is very slow. It took about 60 hours to distill 5 litres of 96.5% alcohol but over a whole run of 50 litres of 40% ethanol from stripping runs using infrequent and easy adjustments to the heater power it doesn't budge from 96.5% alcohol from throwing away the four shots to the end of the run when there is well under 1% of alcohol left in the boiler and the isothermal deflegmator reaches its maximum capacity before it boils over. The deflegmator chamber runs well at about two-thirds full, allowing space for bubbling. So if you're struggling to hit that magic 96.5% alcohol with column top condensers, then give this a try. And if you succeed, let me know.